Napoleon Bonaparte, the Emperor of France, was in dire need of money during the war between his country and England. He was recently given most of the land west of the Mississippi River, that is, from New Orleans northeast to the Great Lakes and northwest to modern-day Montana. He had planned to create an empire in this area of the Americas. This dream fell as he lost control of present-day Haiti, and he offered the land to the United States for $15 million. The deal was struck in April of 1803, signed on May 2nd, and ratified by the Senate. But it brought great controversy and a looming reality that the Union could be disbanded. Federalists in New England were particularly angered by the purchase. With the entering of new states, their already small power could continue to be weakened. They plotted to secede from the Union. Even Thomas Jefferson, who allowed the purchase of the territory, was troubled by it. It contradicted Jefferson's commitment to reduce the national debt and his strict reading of the Constitution. However, he decided that the Constitution's treaty-making provisions allowed him to do this. Little was known about this new land. Jefferson sent his own secretary, Meriwether Lewis, to journey into the frontier. Lewis then sought the help of his friend, William Clark. Lewis made Clark the co-captain of the expedition. These two men enlisted a diverse bunch of men into the Corps of Discovery. They would travel into the Pacific Ocean and back over a two-year period. The expedition was set to be launched in Camp Wood, just outside St. Louis, in the summer of 1804. This purchase allowed more settlers to move west and new explorers to explore the unknown frontier. Captain William Clark. We wintered at the entrance of a small river opposite the mouth of the Missouri called Wood River, where they formed our party, composed of healthy, hardy young men. My dearest friend, Lewis, put me in charge of drilling these men to be able to survive in the wilderness and respect military authority. We are due to leave on the 14th of May, 1804. Meriwether Lewis. I spent a large majority of my time in the months before our official expedition in St. Louis. So many fine young men have volunteered to embark on this treacherous journey. All right, men, we've been training you long and hard for the past few months. Captain William Clark, it is nearly time for our expedition to begin. Some of our men are excited, but most are frightened. A man was punished by the whip for mutiny. Ah! Some have tried to desert the harsh conditions of this first winter in Camp Woods. They are not prepared for the winter we will face in the wilderness. Captain Meriwether Lewis, for travel we use my keelboat. Two smaller boats will carry our supplies and equipment. We will head up the Missouri River and try to stay along it, taking a westbound course. New finds such as animals, plants, and Native American tribes will be recorded. We will also continue to add to this map. Captain William Clark, Lewis has brought along his dog, Seaman, and I have brought along my slave, York. I think they will both be great assets to the team. Captain Meriwether Lewis, a fine idea to me was to climb the large cliff overhang above the cave. I sought to have a better view of the shining terrain, and where is a better place to do that than a high cliff? One could only imagine what would have become of the expedition had its captain died just nine days after the start of the journey.
Sergeant Patrick Gass. We fired a swivel at sunrise in honor of the day and continued our voyage. After dinner, we renewed our voyage and saluted the departing day with another gun. On the night of August 19, 1804, the Corps reached the area just south of Sioux City. Charles Floyd, a member of the Corps, became seriously ill with a burst appendix. Expedition leaders did everything they could to help the poor soldier. Floyd! Oh, Charles! Charles, my God, what has happened to you? At the last. I'm going away, and I want you to write me a letter. Floyd was the only death during the expedition. We need to bury him. Nearby, Sergeant C. Floyd. Captain Did William Clark, I read the funeral service for Charles Floyd. We buried him on the top of the bluff, a mile below a small river to which we gave his name. He was buried with the honors of war, much lamented. Amen. Amen. Sergeant Patrick Gass. We buried him in the most decent manner our circumstances would admit. The Corps were working diligently to complete the construction of Fort Mandan before the coming Northern Plains winter. Lewis and Clark began interviewing men to hire as interpreters, as they knew that they would need the help of more tribes in the winter. French, English, obviously. Toussaint Charbonneau was a French-Canadian fur trader who had claimed two Shoshone women, one of them being Sacagawea, as his wives. Because I feel like I can really help your expedition in return for... Charbonneau was hired because of his wife, Sacagawea, who spoke Shoshone. She was six months pregnant at the time. On February 11th of 1805, Sacagawea gave birth to a baby boy by the help of Louis. She named him Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau. He would become the youngest expedition member. While the expedition wintered at Fort Mandan, they came in contact with many Native American tribes. The closest Mandan village was Mintutanka. They became very familiar with the village and its leading chiefs. Sheheka, known to the captains as Big White, was the most prominent leader. Kagohami, or Little Raven, was the second chief. Captain Meriwether Lewis. The Mandans are the most friendly, well-disposed Indians inhabiting the Missouri. They are brave, humane, and hospitable. Captain William Clark. The Mandans were surprised that we had a Shoshone woman with us. They were also intrigued by the fact that she had a baby and offered their blessings for the child. Captain Meriwether Lewis, we embark again to penetrate a country at least 2,000 miles in width on which the foot of civilized man has never trodden. My men are in excellent health and spirits, zealously attached to the enterprise and anxious to proceed, not a whisper of murmur or discontent to be heard among them. Captain Meriwether Lewis, the wife of Toussaint Charbonneau, knows much of the vegetation of the land. She speaks Shoshone and Hidatsu, the languages of many Indians that we have encountered. She has taught us many remedies for our crew's ailments in the time that she has traveled with us. Captain William Clark, I set out very early to hunt. I walked on shore and saw fresh bear tracks. One deer and two beaver were killed nearby. The plains are beginning to have a green appearance. The hills on either side are from five to seven miles asunder. 
They are high and rich. Captain William Clark, we encountered a bear today. Six men, all good hunters, took on a large grizzly. We had to resort to jumping into the river below us. The beast jumped in just behind the last man. One of the men on the shore shot him through the head and killed him. The bear is not a force to be reckoned with. On May 14th of 1805, a boat containing precious cargo, including journals, specimens, and other instruments, tipped over as a gust of wind blew through. Sacagawea's quick thinking saved these materials. Without her strength and courage, we could not have these artifacts today. Captain William Clark, Sacagawea has been deathly ill since the 13th of June. It is now the 16th. Lewis has encouraged me to give her to drink some mineral water, and she seems to be improving. We shall see. She has made a speedy recovery and is now able to eat, free of fever. Captain Meriwether Lewis, we gave the men a drink of spirits, it being the last of our stock, and some of them appeared a little sensible of its effects. The fiddle was played and they danced very merrily until nine in the evening when a heavy shower of rain put an end to that part of the amusement. They continued their mirth with songs and festive jokes and were extremely merry until late at night. We had a very comfortable dinner of bacon, beans, soup, dumplings, and buffalo beef. In short, we had no just cause to covet the sumptuous feast of our countrymen on this day. Captain William Clark, ocean in view, oh the joy. Captain Meriwether Lewis, we resigned to spending the winter on the coast since there were no ships to take us home. The Corps' Christmas dinner was particularly awful, as it consisted of spoiled meat and fish. Their supplies were dangerously low, but one officer was quoted saying, The men are all in good health, a blessing which we esteem more than all the luxuries this life can afford. As they would leave Clatsop, they left the furniture and fort to the Clatsop chief, for he had been the friendliest in the neighborhood. Captain Meriwether Lewis, even though we have completed our trek to the Pacific, our journey is not yet done. We must return home and report our findings of plants and animals to Mr. Jefferson. Look, it's a beaver! You're right! It will be worth so much. Come on, men. One day in the morning, Lewis was hunting an elk. Private Pierre Cruzate was hunting as well. This man was blind in one eye and nearsighted in the other, so it was easy to see how he would have mistook Lewis and his buckskins for an elk. Lewis, what happened? I was shot in the buttocks by Pierre. How did that happen? He mistook me for an elk. And I guess he is blind in one eye, so it makes sense. Are you sure he didn't purposely aim for you? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. Good luck recovering. Captain William Clark, on our return journey, we just happened to pass by Charles Floyd's grave. We opted to fix it up from the animals that had ravaged his grave since then.
After two hard, long years, we were home. Captain William Clark. Our journey was difficult, but worth it. Although we faced many hardships, we did a great service for our country. In total, we discovered 174 plants and 134 animals. We also established peace with many Native American tribes. Lewis, in the end, was granted the position of the governor of the Louisiana Territory. I was made the head of Indian Affairs in St. Louis. God bless America. I want your team! We don't care! Kill the ally! So, Jefferson is amazing just because. No, we're against Jefferson. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Zvanyo! Finally, someone to carry on my last name. He knew it was Jefferson. He's not a Jefferson. He's not a Jefferson. He's not a Jefferson. Joe's just like You have to fall We have a